I was watching the new DVD this morning, uh, live at the Walker Theater. Oh, sorry, I still call it the Walker <laughs> yeah, Theater. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, you're not alone in that. Yeah, it, it, the Burton Cummings Theater is used, to, uh, like, uh, I, I've, I've actually never heard it used. No one in Winnipeg calls it the Burton Cummings Theater. I don't no, think. I... Yeah, yeah. Because I'm from Winnipeg, too. Right, right. So when you grow uh, up in Winnipeg, you tend not to spend a whole lot of time dwelling on Burton Cummings and the guests who in Backmonton or Overdrive. It's I guess just, not. Yeah, it's true. It's true. They're kind of a... Uh, they're there, but you don't really talk about it. Yeah, and then there was a time... I don't know if you remember. Burton went to get a pint of milk. Yes. At the 7-Eleven on... This is a very famous story on Arlington. On Arlington. Yeah, yeah. And I guess he interrupted uh, a robbery, or it was... A was domestic it? dispute, I think it was. And he got clonked in the head with a beer bottle. He did. Someone threw a beer bottle at him. And there's, a, there's actually uh, friends of mine who are filmmakers in Winnipeg are, have been um, thinking about this story that you brought up for a long time, because it is this iconic Winnipeg story, because no one's really ever clear what happened. And there's about 10 or 11 different versions of the story. And so they've just, they've just been making this film where they recreate... <laughs> uh, different uh, versions of the story, and uh, and it's pretty fascinating. Thing. Well, I remember yeah. when it happened, and one of the radio stations in in the mm. city actually came up came up with a contest, and I think what the whole idea was there was a picture of Burton Cummings, and you were supposed to throw beer bottles. Oh out. man, come on, it was, it, <laughs> that's not fair. It, it wasn't, but yeah. <laughs> but it was an iconic story. Sure, sure, yeah, of, it really was. Yeah, the of, uh, Winnipeg it's Rock. true. That it's a really, really. Um, I mean, he's an interesting guy, for sure. I, I, I used to go to the Odeon Theater. Which right, is to what, see movies, right? To see movies. Yeah, yeah. I did, too. Because there was the Odeon, then you had the Garrick. Right, the Garrick the was down there. Yeah. The Capitol. The Capitol, and the Met. And the Met. Oh, yeah, the Met was a beautiful... Those are all those great old vaudeville yeah, theaters. Yeah, And the only one that's, that's, that's really standing it's, is it's the Burton, Burton Cummings Theater. That's right, that's right. And that's a great place to shoot a DVD because the acoustics there are still really good. The sight lines are really good for the audience. Yeah. What's, the, what's the capacity there, 800? I think it's a little more, actually, because um, they have what they, uh, what they called the God Balcony when right. they built it, which was, for, uh, which was for the people who couldn't afford nice seats, and it's just like this insanely high balcony. It's steep. Super easy. I can't even walk up there. You get vertigo. But it's really interesting to be on the stage and stare up at, stare up at it because it's this like... You have the audience, then you have this bank of, of people. It's really a really beautiful spot, yeah. And they've, they've restored it really well, I have to say. I, I, think, I think it was built in 19... Job. I want to say 1910? 06, I think. 06. Built in 06, opened in 07, yeah. So 100, 103 years now it's been... And back then they made those buildings with some really good acoustics. You listen to this, true, this DVD. Mm. Um, in fact, if you were to give somebody just the soundtrack mm. of the film, yeah. you couldn't really tell that that was a live performance. Oh, that's nice. That's, I think that's nice. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I went through the live CD yeah, again yeah, today, yeah. and first of all, the playing is really tight. The mix oh, is really good. Yeah. And the final master, I mean, it, it could be you guys in just a, a big, nice room. Oh, that's nice to know. Yeah, I think that our, our sound man, Cam Lepke, who's been with us since we started, um, this is the first time he's really mixed a record for us. Like, mm -hmm. He took it to a studio. He recorded it all. Uh, those nights and took it to a studio and mixed it there and um, and and that was really great because he's he he knows our sound the best of of anyone he's seen um, far too many weaker than shows obviously mm -hmm. he's seen every one of them so um, uh, so yeah that was that was kind of cool to have him in on the in on the process and and I think it's a pretty accurate kind of uh, uh, example of, of who we are right now as a band. So. The vocals really caught my ear because mm. they're so smooth. Oh, thanks. I mean, you must have had some really good monitoring because yeah. I, you know, if you were to A, B, let's say One Great City from the performance to One Great City from the album. This is true. It's really hard to tell the difference. So hmm. it's, it's a very faithful performance for what, what you guys were, were, were trying to accomplish. Why, but why now a DVD? Is, was it just time? I'm not sure. I think, I think just because the option was there, I guess. We were also we also had film going at the time. Like we, it's kind of confusing because um, this director, Calum Vattensdahl from Winnipeg, is also working on a kind of cross country documentary of our mm. tour that year we did last year, and so uh, he had all these cameras at the Winnipeg show. How so many? Just, uh, seven, I think. Yeah. Six okay. or seven. Yeah. So I mean, it wasn't like a crazy huge production like like um, like big like a big band would do. 
But um, well, it, it's not a you know Scorsese doing the Stones. This is true. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but six or seven cameras yeah. for you know just because I'm familiar with the theater and, and the stage. Right. That's that's provides you some excellent coverage. You get some. Good yeah, shows. no, we've got some nice stuff, I think. And and so then we just decided um, Epitaph was was kind enough to want to put out the live record, and then we just decided. You, I mean, the technology is there. You can do that now, right? Mm. You can just kind of slap a DVD in the case along with it. And it's kind of nice. I think it's a nice. That's a nice document as well. Uh, you know, again, listening to all your stuff, I'm, I'm thinking, how many bands could get away with writing a song about the Canadian Women's Curling Championship and mm. not make it sound ironic? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, well, it's just something I love, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to write about curling. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> okay, hang on. Come on, what? <laughs> Hang on. I mean, Chart Attack did a really good thing uh -huh. just before the Olympics. They wrote ten. They had a column called Ten Great Songs About Curling." Oh yeah, yeah. And your song was "Tournament of Hearts" was included. Oh cool. But then they had some guy from 1965. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised by that. I think I think that curling lends itself really well to the language of curling is really uh, it's rich. Like it's got all the all this specific language that doesn't exist anywhere else and is super descriptive. And, uh, yeah, you know, there's tons of baseball songs and hockey songs, and I just think curling is, yeah. I think there should be a new genre. I think we should all <laughs> develop this genre. I was trying. Curling song. During the Olympics, I was trying to explain it to my wife. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do they mean when they're saying hurry hard? Right, right, right. Okay. What's that line? It's called the hog line. Why is it called the hog line? Mm -hmm. Why are some houses red, white, and blue, and others are green, white, and something? This is true. Dear, if you didn't grow up in the prairies in certain parts of <laughs> yeah. northern Ontario in the Maritimes, you I know, have I know. no idea what I'm talking about. Well, I, th I read some statistics that there's, there's like maybe um, 800,000 curlers in the world. Um, and what is the figure? Anyway, 90% of curlers are from Canada, right? Yeah. And probably, you know, Winnipeg has 21 curling clubs. And I, I don't think Toronto has, well, Toronto probably has half a dozen or something. Yeah, maybe. But, um, you, I mean, it's the school, highest highest concentration of curling anywhere in the world. In my it? high school, you could take curling for credit. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's why, I think that's probably why I, um, I started. I don't know. That's pretty good credit. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Straw or synthetic or brush? Well, I, you know, I, I started this curling. This is kind of scary that we're having, <laughs> having this conversation. You know, I started learning just uh, as they were phasing straw out, so I'm just a synthetic guy. And I, actually, my first coach, the person who taught me to curl was Connie Laliberti. Oh, no kidding! Yeah, the great world champion, Connie Laliberti, was the, was the first curling pro, I think, in the world. And she was at the Winnipeg Winter Club. And um, so I signed up, and she taught me how to curl. And she was an incredible teacher, really great. She still gives clinics in Winnipeg. If you know if you want to come to Winnipeg and learn how to curl from former world champion Connie Laliberti. But she's so she's the one who taught me how to sweep, and and she she was a proponent of the synthetic. Eh, everyone uses them now, so yeah, or the, even, or the brush. I kind of wish I knew how to do the. the well, you got that sound. The corn broom. It was a beautiful sound. Yeah, it's true. You soak in a little bit of water, and you get that nice slap. And yeah, it's true. It's great, great sound. Yeah. Thwack. My dad ran into Don Duke at one time. Wow. And, you know, it was like he had met yeah, Mick sure, Jagger. Yeah. Oh, I, would, I would be the same way. It's Again, yeah. if you don't know <laughs> curling, you don't that's know right, what we're right. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do know curling, you're going, you're leaning forward and going, really? Yeah, <laughs> this is the coolest. It's true. Uh, 